This is Bliss Oasis. Change your thinking, change your life. Yeah, we are doing that in Zambia. Mm-hmm. Two months ago, I was in uh, Eastern uh, DRC. Mm-hmm. We are also teaching Maasai in Tanzania. Mm-hmm. Many, many of them learning TM in Tanzania. Mm. Um, in Kenya also, uh, we have groups in Nandi Hills, in, in um, Korea, mm. uh, in, uh, and we have, you know, also people or schools in, um, uh, we have one in Kibera, we have one in Kangware, we have uh, in Nakuru, some orphanage, we are teaching South Sudanese refugees oh. uh, in, in Nakuru as well. Mm. And, uh, you know, all these kinds of uh, projects, you know, they, they learn TM for free. So, viewers, welcome again to Bliss Oasis Africa, where we go out there and bring you stories and told stories of everyday people. Today we have Solomon Mwangi, who is also, apart from uh, being a very close friend for many years, he taught me a few things about the universe and about myself through a special science, which is going to talk to us about. And here I'm talking about meditation. Perhaps you have heard before, it's being said that Human, human person or people are spiritual beings in physical body or living in physical body. But then what we are usually not told but is that a person, a man or a woman or a child is three in one. That is a spirit, the mind and the body. So today we are going to get the connection, the connection of the body in the spirit and the mind, but that comes through meditation and other spiritual practices. And when you talk about spiritual practices, let's not confuse being spiritual and being religious. Human being, we are told, is a spiritual being. Sometimes he's also religious, but here we talk about the spirit. And before you go far, let us hear a bit about a bit of Solomon Mangi's background and he'll tell us how he became to be a teacher of meditation and what type of meditation, because meditation is so huge. Solomon Mwangi, welcome to Bliss Offices Africa. And we want to hear your untold stories first. <laughs> tell us a bit of, about your background. And I understand you're in, right now you're in Zambia. You're not, you're not in Kenya. You later on tell us what you're doing in Zambia. Like in Karibu Sana. Yeah, Santi. Yeah, so my name is Solomon Mwangi, and uh, as uh, Patrick says, as, as you, you, you're saying, I, I've been involved with this uh, technique of uh, transcendental meditation for many years. I first came across uh, the technique when I was in the university, first year university student, 46 years ago. Mm. And uh, a friend of mine who was in my class, told me about it and uh, there was an advert on uh, in the newspaper showing that there is a an intro lecture on TM at the British Council which was near the university and one thing he just told me is that once you learn this thing it will make you so relaxed Mm -hmm. (laughs) and the way he said it you know it's like I was just yearning for that relaxation yeah so, so I went to the to the talk. Uh, it was on a Thursday evening, and um, it was uh, the, the advert had said that uh, the person it was sh- saying transcendental meditation as taught by Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Okay. And there was this this uh, picture of uh, a man who was looking very wise. Uh, with a beard. <laughs> so I thought he was the one who was going to give the lecture. Okay. And I went, uh, and then uh, we were all facing the, the screen. There was a curtain. It was because it's a theater, there was a curtain in front. Yeah. 
And when the time came for the lecture to start, I was expecting the curtains will open and Maharishi <laughs> would uh, start talking. Yes. Instead, some Muzungu uh, and on the front row just turned around and then started talking. And after some time, I realized he was the one who was uh, giving the talk. But he right. seemed a very nice man. Okay. And, and he told us how we can learn. And then I learned uh, the following uh, the, the two days later, and uh, I've practiced TM twice a day ever since. Ever since? Ever since? Which year was yes. That was 1976. Wow, wow, that's a, wow, that's a long time ago. <laughs> we will go deeper later as we later in the program about why you have continued all these years up to now. It must be something very good for you. But tell us, what were you studying at the university? So that, you know... Yeah, yeah I was... And why, and why were you looking for this relaxation? <laughs> I was studying uh, architecture. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, in architecture, you needed uh, creativity. And, you know, uh, of course, when your mind is not uh, relaxed, then the creativity does not come out very, very clearly. But at that time, I, it's just that I was looking for the relaxation. I think I had been tired, you know, uh, ever since I was uh, young, mm. uh, working, working in the shambas in, the, in, in Moranga with my grandfather forcing us to mm. work in the shambas. I, I think I had been tired and I used to feel the tiredness throughout high school. And I think my body just was just ready for that uh, relaxation. Yes. And... Um, also, I had been in, in, you know, attained other bad habits in high school, uh, like smoking. I, I started smoking in, um, when I was in Form 2. Mm. I also started drinking over the weekends. And especially smoking, I had been trying to, to stop without success. Mm. And I think I wanted something that might help to replace that uh, need for, for this... Uh, uh, substance which is not natural. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's one of the things, but I always used to feel tired until I learned transcendental meditation and it gave, it gave me that relaxation. So when you say tired, are you talking about physical, physical uh, weariness or? Yes, yes. One that's would that's expect it to be tired, physical, but maybe you're talking about mental tired, tiredness or? It may have an effect on uh, the mind, but basically I used to, to feel tired, especially my lower back. Always I used to feel some kind of tension there. Yes. Yeah. So you are going to this meditation because somebody told you you'll be so relaxed. Right. Smoking, that's, that's... smoking, like I don't know for how many years at that point, and, and drinking, and... Uh, what led you first of all to smoking and drinking before we we see what happened after that? Ah, you know that was just uh, maybe I can call it peer pressure in high school. Yeah, ah, guys, guys who used to used to smoke and they used to be, you know, to look. We used to call it look hip, meaning <laughs> the, the guys who are smoking are like tough guys. Yeah, and and the movies and the movies had <laughs> the movies especially. Yeah, you know, we always, those days, that, that was a form of entertainment, going to the movies. Yes. Uh, and then you... Especially, see... especially like now in the university, every Saturday you must go to a movie. Yes. And, and then, then before they, they bring uh, the movie, they used to advertise uh, cigarettes. Yes, Marlboro. I remember them, the cowboys. Yes. <laughs> Marlboro cigarettes, Marlboro country. Yes. And also in the novels, we used to read James Hadley Chase and, yes. uh, and so on. He took us and, uh, this... <laughs> took us a, a cigarette and a, and, and a sweep of whiskey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then the nerves were calmed, you know? Yeah, but things have changed since then because you rarely see those advertisements, even on television, yeah. cigarettes, and, uh, and also like the safari rally used to be sponsored by marlboro in fact, oh, yeah yeah I remember that. Rally that time yeah so when you see a vehicle, so... a vehicle pass <laughs> you take out uh, your cigarette and, <laughs> and yeah 
<laughs> it is true. It's uh, uh, these days. I, I think these days it's discouraged. The okay. advertising is discouraged. So you, you, it was at it was at that point. Which year were you at the university by then? Uh, the first year. It was first year, nineteen seventy-six. Okay, and here you are. You go to to see Maharishi. Yeah. And then he's a, this Mzungu who comes and then he, he will learn the technique. How long did it take you before you maybe lost the desire? Or was it gradual? Or was it dramatic? Or how, what happened? Desire to smoke and drink. Within three weeks, I had stopped smoking. Spontaneously, I, I found I could now do without smoking. Mm -hmm. um, and drinking, I remember, you know, I used to go to the pub at 680 Hotel ah. and just sit there. Mm. And one day, I think it, it was within the first month, I just found myself having the desire, uh, just, just sitting in the pub and I, I just suddenly had, uh, felt inside, you know, what am I really doing here? Mm. And um, I felt like, uh, my nervous system has changed now and I feel like I, I should be doing something more useful. Mm -hmm. And I just got out of the pub and, 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 and moved on. I never, I never, I, okay, I, I continued drinking uh, little by little, but I never, you know, started, uh, I never continued just sitting in one place, you know, for hours and hours just sitting. Yeah. I felt like uh, my mind had changed uh, and, and, and had become more, it's like the thoughts I used to have now are think, thoughts of more progress mm. than thoughts of, uh, you know, just wasting time. Mm. So it was a thought of more progress and less problems, or well, the problems were there, but you're looking at them differently. Uh, well, I, I don't think I was drinking because of problems. I was just drinking because it was the thing to do, you know? Mm. Just sit relaxing with a drink. But then I think I was already so relaxed, you know, mm. I didn't feel the drink now to relax. So I, my mind was already mm. relaxed so and, and also alert at the same time. And All therefore right. just needing to, to, to do something else, uh, so to be more active, yeah. Okay. So how did the... Uh... Maybe you are uh, okay. You you became more relaxed, I'm sure. And uh, it, yeah. that what effect did it have with your you know with your now uh, college, your studies? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I started finding that I, I was understanding things much faster. Mm -hmm. And uh, what one other thing I did was uh, because of that, wanting my friends also to learn mm. the technique. Mm -hmm. So I used to take my friends. I took many, many friends to learn at the TM Center. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, at that time, of course, I never knew I would ever become a, a, <laughs> a teacher of TM. <laughs> okay. I thought I, uh, when I finished university and started working, uh, I was still taking my friends to the TM Center. And then there was one day. That's the one uh, in the or somewhere else. It was at Adam's arcade. Okay. And I didn't. Oh yeah, it had it moved to Gong Road on uh, in 1981. Yeah, just around that time. Mm. And um, I remember I used to take my friends there. And uh, there was a time I was supposed supposed to be transferred. When once I started working, I was supposed mm. to to be transferred to Embu. We were mm. designing a prison complex mm. for the government, and I was uh, to go there as a project architect. Mm. And I remember thinking to myself, if I make friends there now, I will not be able to take them to the TM Center <laughs> to learn. Okay. And that's when I felt, you know, you know, that's so that whenever I, because TM had such a good, a big impact on me, mm. in order for me to always be effective with my friends, mm. uh, 
wherever I am, I need to become a TM teacher. Mm. So that even if I'm in a remote place and you know I meet people who want to learn or who have issues and they want to learn, I can okay. I can be at like at, at a TM center, you know, a mobile TM center. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true. And I think now and um you know, at that time the economy had started uh, going down mm. a little bit, and the work for architects was very kiddo. Mm. It was, and I could see uh, in, in the office where I was working, my boss was not happy that he was paying us, and we are not having much work. You're not, no, pro, no, you're not producing anything. Yeah, and then uh, coincidentally, I. By comic design, Maharishi comes into Kenya, ah. Nairobi, and a TM course is a TM teacher training course is organized in Nakuru. Yes, yes. <laughs> ah. <laughs> which takes about five months in residence in one place. Mm. So here I am, uh, thinking I should become a TM teacher, mm. and then uh, the course is organized, mm. and then there is. Uh, less work in the office, mm. so my boss was very happy to give me Release. five months <laughs> unpaid uh, unpaid leave. <laughs> and he had to he had to make sure it is unpaid. <laughs> yes, and that was 1983. Okay, now, so now I, I, yeah, I you, went and trained as a teacher then. Yeah, we will we'll continue with that a bit later. What I'm interested yeah. to know right now is uh, for. People who have never done any meditation and, uh, and uh, may not even know, even understand what you're talking about, even before you talk about TM. What is meditation? And I'm sure we always do it. We do it without knowing that is that, but maybe you do it indifferently. But briefly, can you describe to us, can you tell us what is meditation all about? Well, you know, there are many forms of meditation yeah. uh, because meditation means thinking thinking and uh, yeah when we are thinking about something we are meditating mm -hmm. sure and uh, so there there is meditation that uh, you know has dwells on the level of meaning mm. for example most uh, religious meditations you know they maybe take a verse from the scriptures and trying to analyze if there is any hidden meaning or deeper mm. meaning. Yeah. So that is a contemplative meditation. Yes. And then there are some forms of meditation which are called concentration meditations, mm -hmm. where you're supposed to train your mind uh, to concentrate on something, maybe a candle flame. You focus on the candle flame, and uh, you know, when the mind wants to go away, you keep it focused. You know, just to discipline the mind, so that when you you want to do some task and you tell the mind to do it, uh, then because it's used to being whipped, mm. then it does it. <laughs> okay. And so those are two types of meditation. And uh, then uh, we have transcendental meditation, which is does not. Uh, deal with any concentration or contemplation. Transcendental meditation is the easiest thing you are ever going to learn. Mm -hmm. Because all you learn to do is to let go on the surface mind mm -hmm. and then the mind, allow the mind to settle down. Mm -hmm. So you, la you learn the technique of uh, the mind settling down mm -hmm. in a very, very natural, natural way. Okay. So um, and when the mind settles down, it experiences a state of uh, orderliness, more settled mind, until we experience the finest state of the mind, which is the state of least excitation. Mm -hmm. And um, when the mind is least excited, it is like um, uh, water, you know, in the wave, the waves in the water, in a lake or a on the ocean. When you are having many, many waves, then that is like an excited mind. And when maybe in the morning you can find the ocean is very calm, that is a settled mind. Mm. 
So having a settled mind is, uh, it allows our mind to become very, uh, very clear mm. with our thinking. Mm. And uh, a lot of research has been done which shows the benefits of this. Okay. Before we go to that research, because I know there are many research, the effect of the of, of meditation in a given society, why would I, for example, want to come and learn TM rather than go and learn any other form of meditation? Because meditation is meditation. Yeah, the, the thing is, uh, yeah, they, they are... There are many forms of meditation. Why I would recommend TM is because it is the easiest and the most effective, according to research, in mm -hmm. um, uh, bringing more uh, rest to the mind. And uh, when the mind settles down, the body also settles down, mm -hmm. we gain a rest, which is much deeper than in the deepest part of sleep. And mm -hmm. that gets rid of stresses in a very natural way. Mm -hmm. So. TM has been found to be most effective in uh, releasing stress mm. um, and um, uh, developing uh, coherence in the in the brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also understand that, like in your case, it helped you, you know, get so relaxed that you didn't need to take drugs or rather you didn't need to take cigarettes. And eventually, did you completely stop taking beer, alcohol? Eventually, yes, I did. <laughs> eventually, so yes, so. eventually I did. I, I did. I mean, you know, you still, I would still take alcohol, but just you know, socially. Mm. But uh, you know, eventually, I was feeling I, I really don't need it. I mean, but if even even now, if I take alcohol, you know, there's there's no. I mean, if I take a little bit of alcohol, there is no harm, but uh, I, I just find I don't need it. All right. Now, many people will tell you, many people will say this, this old man with white beard called Maharishi Mahesh Yogi is an Indian priest. And whatever he came to teach you and many others who have learned meditation is an Indian kind of worship or practice or religion. What would you say to that? And what do you say to that? Because many people say, even they talk about meditation, it's emptying your mind. And when your mind is empty, the devil comes in and <laughs> can do anything they want. Yeah. Uh, the, first of all, Maharishi is not uh, a priest. He was a physicist. He studied physics to, uh, and did his master's degree in physics in India. And what he learned in physics is that everything in nature is orderly. You know, when you move, see the, how the, uh, everything grows in a very orderly way, when you see how this, uh, the earth moves around the sun, I was going to say that the sun moves around the sun. And so on, the whole, the whole system, the whole universe, how it operates is in a very orderly way. Hmm. And he could see that in human uh, life, it's all chaotic. Mm. So he felt dissatisfied and uh, he wanted to find out how to attune the human life with uh, you know, that orderliness of nature. Yes. And he heard about this uh, teacher who was there somewhere in the, in the Himalayas, mm. I, you know, who had this knowledge how to attune the mind to, um, to become very natural. Okay. and less chaotic. So that's how he, he, he went and learned, uh, you know, this technique. And um, uh, I would say it, it's a technique which is, uh, has, had been kept by these sages uh, for thousands of years in its purity mm -hmm. until it came to Maharishi. Mm -hmm. And then when Maharishi, uh, oh, it, that in 1950s, now he could move around, uh, around the world because uh, you know jets were available, videos were available, telephone communication was available. So he, he moved around the world now teaching. And he came to Kenya in 19, uh, 
261 and 200 people in Nairobi. Oh. And, um, you know, while he was moving around the world. So, first of all, it's, it, you know, he, he, it's a very, uh, it's a technique that is not related to religion at all. Mm. And uh, it, but it helps, it helps religious people become, uh, be able to follow the teachings of their religion and to understand their religion better. Okay. So, and then, um, uh, what, what, what was the other question? <laughs> yeah, yeah, when you do your meditation, you're emptying your mind. Oh, yeah, you are, you're emptying your mind. Yeah. Are you yes, that is the big, biggest misconception because what uh, you're doing is not you're emptying your mind. Mm. You are actually filling your mind with coherence, orderliness. So you are emptying the mind of disorder. Mm. And a disorderly system is the one which is more easily uh, you know, penetrated by negativity. Mm. An orderly system uh, does not get penetrated by negativity as much. Okay. And so when we are more orderly in our thinking, then uh, it's, it's not easy for us to be penetrated by negativity. Okay. So you say the much first came to Kenya in 1960, what? 61? 61, yeah. You yeah. talked to 100 people? Yeah, he talked to 100 people in uh, Kipande House. Mm. Opposite, the, opposite the GPO, there is that uh, oh, yeah, ACB oh, yeah. bank. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a hall then. And is that when the, the Kenyan center was opened? No, no. Uh, Kenya, we, were, we started teaching officially in 1973. Mm. That's when the uh, International Meditation Society was uh, registered. 1973? Yes. Okay. Um, somebody who wants to, to learn, who may want to learn to do the technique, um, can, he do it, can they do it online or they have to come to the center? Wherever it is. Where is the center, by the way? The center is on uh, Moringa Road in Kilimani, mm. and um, that's near Adams Arcade. Mm. It's very accessible by all means, uh, you know, public or private means. Yeah. And uh, if when one wants to learn, they can uh, attend an introductory meeting. This uh, since COVID came. We are, we are holding introductory meetings online. Okay. It's about an hour. Okay. It's about an hour to hear about all the benefits. Mm. And then once you have uh, got all the, all the uh, intro and uh, benefits and where it comes from and how it's different from other forms of meditation mm. and uh, how it works, then you can actually learn the technique. Now to learn the technique, why are you meeting the teacher personally? Mm. And um, it takes about one to one and a half hours to actually get the TM instruction. Mm. If you have a smartphone, uh, then af after learning the instruction, the rest of the steps can be taken uh, in, you know, uh, online. We meet uh, on Zoom. It takes about three more days, uh, about 20 20 to 30 minute meeting with a teacher or mm. online, mm. as well as uh, some, uh, we have a TM app, which is uh, very interactive. And using this tool now, it's called the digital course. Mm. But for the instruction, you have to come to the TM center or the teacher can come to you. Come if, to you. If, if you need, yeah. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that's quite, quite, quite interesting. Transcendental meditation isn't a lifestyle. There are no do's and don'ts associated with the practice. It's not a religion. It's not a philosophy. It's not a worldview even. Again, just a simple technique with profound, scientifically documented benefits. The Transcendental meditation technique has been the subject of over 600 scientific studies published in the world's foremost scientific journals. 
And it's a result of this wide-ranging research on the vast benefits of this simple practice that it has become, over the years, the most widely practiced system of meditation in the world, also the most broadly prescribed by doctors for its health-promoting, life-promoting benefits. Welcome again, uh, viewers, for the second part of this interview with Solomon Mwangi, who is a teacher of Transcendental Meditation. Earlier on in the program, he had told us how he managed to get, gladly took five months and paid leave from work. And he was glad because even at the work, at that particular time, there was no business, but his passion was also going to learn TM and there was this opportunity which presented itself when Marish Mahesh, Marish Mahesh Yogi announced there will be a teaching, teacher's training course in Nakuru. And he gladly took it. So Solomon, you went, what were you expecting as you went to day one, as you arrived in Nakuru to start learning this thing that you gladly lie, fallen in love with? <laughs> Yeah, I just looked forward to it, and uh, we got very, very good knowledge mm. and uh, how 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 to teach. We okay. did a lot more meditation there, of course, yes. and uh, uh, so that uh, the knowledge could really sink. And then uh, after five months, uh, I became a TM teacher, and uh, I went also back to work. Mm. Uh, and uh, I worked again for another five and a half years in that office as I was teaching TM on the side. Okay. But after that, uh, I, I, then things were really bad economically, mm. uh, around 1987. And, uh, you know, I had I actually had to resign from the office because there was so much unhappiness about the situation in the country. <laughs> All right. Okay. And then my also like, like yes, and my the project I was going to work for in Embu was also shared by the government. Ah. And uh, so I, I remained think, in Nairobi, I, but now I, I, I was a TM teacher. I think, as as they say somewhere, the the, the universe was 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 uh, what is the word they use? The universe is like was preparing <laughs> you, <laughs> conspiring. Yes. So conspiring. conspiring for you to follow that direction. And because you are so much into it. When it's time for you to do something, always something happens. Yes. The universe conspires. All the ways are blocked, but this particular line is yeah. open. And I think you used to tell me that is called nature support. What is nature yes. support? <laughs> support, support of, of nature. nature. <laughs> <laughs> now, so how many st students were you in uh, Nakuru? I think we were about 18, uh, but from different countries. Oh, who, uh, mm. It was an international course, some from uh, Uganda, mm. and some from uh, Zimbabwe, some from Mauritius. Uh, all from Africa? Yes, all from Africa. It was an African teacher training course. OK. So has there been another one in, in Africa, in Kenya, maybe, or Africa? Since yeah, we had. We had, we had uh, more, more teacher training courses. We had another one in 1987 and another one in 1992. In Kenya? Uh, all of them international, yeah. International courses in Kenya. Mm. After that, uh, they have all, all been held uh, in uh, other facilities. Mm. Uh, currently, they are either held in Holland or, uh, or Thailand, where we have some academies. OK. Yeah. So Kenya has uh, received <coughs> Maharishi for the very first time and trained 200 people in, in 1961. And then you've had those training, teacher training courses. How has, has the effect been? Do we have a member, do we have many people doing the TM in Kenya? Oh yeah, very many people do TM in Kenya. Mm. It's, it's the thing about TM is basically it's a do-it-yourself technique. Yeah. So what happens is when you learn it, then you can continue doing it 
by yourself at home. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, people may never know that you do it. So since the uh, 70s, especially when we started teaching many people, uh, when we opened the TM Center, many, many people have learned TM. Would you have to think uh, uh, um, And because we also had, we have groups also who learn in schools, mm. uh, it's more than 40,000 people who have learned TM. In Kenya, 40,000? Yeah, maybe by now 50,000. Mm. Around the world, more than 10 million have learned. 10 million? 10 million, more than 10 million. Wow. Have learned. And there is something wow. called Maharishi effect. Can you tell us what it is? Well, uh, in 1975, some studies uh, uh, in some cities had many, many people learning TM. And uh, whenever the population of the people learning TM in a city reached 1% of the population. 1%? Yes, 1% of the population learned TM. Mm. Then there was uh, some effect in the society which was uh, measurable. For example, crime rate goes going down by about uh, seventeen percent. Uh, car accident rates and so on. Hospital admissions also going down. And uh, this was um, something that Maharishi had postulated mm. that when one percent of in a system changes in a particular way, the whole system is mm. influenced. Yes. And uh, so, because he had postulated this before even the effect had been found, yes, that's why it was named the Maharishi effect. The Maharishi effect. But the Maharishi effect basically means that we can change our society mm. by just changing, uh, for example, you know, when our brain, uh, when we meditate and our brain activity becomes orderly, very orderly, mm. that is radiated in the society. Okay. When you have 1% of the population radiating that coherence in the mm. society, mm. then it has an effect, an effect even on those people who are not uh, practicing TM. Okay. Uh, something called collective consciousness. So collective consciousness. this is an indication that individual consciousness mm. has an influence on the collective consciousness. Okay. And uh, collective consciousness has an influence on the individual consciousness. All right. And I thought, maybe you, you will correct me here, but I thought uh, it is square root of 1%, or is it 1%? It is 1% when people are just uh, practicing the technique by themselves mm -hmm. uh, uh, at home. Oh. If they do it together in a group, yeah. then the same effect is found um, when... Uh, there, there was like... So what is a square root of 1% then? What does that mean? Let me first explain that the effect I was talking about of 1% of the population practicing TM and having that effect mm. is when the people practicing technique uh, they be seated, you know, in their homes mm. or office. If they are in a group together, the same effect is found when even a smaller number is practicing. That is 1% mm. of 1% mm. of the population. Oh. Uh, it has the same effect. But there is some more advanced uh, technique called TMCD program. Oh, okay. And now with the TMCD program, which means, uh, you know, uh, it's a technique which, which is much, creates much more orderliness in the brain. Mm. Then when the people are practicing it together, the effect is created by the square root of 1% of the population. Oh. Now you can imagine, uh, uh, for example, when the 
the population of the world was 4.9 billion. Mm. You needed about 7,000 people together in one group practicing this mm. to create that effect for, mm. for it to be felt on a global level. Okay. And they actually did an experiment with that for, I think, three weeks mm. in 19, at the end of 1983 uh, in Maharishi University in, uh, in Iowa in mm. the U.S., Yes. where they gathered uh, you know seven people practicing this DMCD program together mm. and um, the they studied the global tendencies at that time and mm. it was it was satis certified that it was very effective in bringing more positivity <clears throat> and uh, uh, reducing negativity in the world mm. so the square root of one percent of one of the population of the world mm. um, uh, people practicing TM can create a very, very powerful effect of uh, in increasing coherence in global consciousness. Okay. So you, you, you told me, you, you just said that uh, in the world, there are how many meditators in the whole world? 50 million? Uh, more than 10 million. More than 10 million. Yeah. And uh, they are not, I don't know, I have not done the months. They are not 10% of the world. <laughs> well, I think it's a 10 billion. <laughs> do, they have any, do, they have any do they have any effect in the world? Of course, they have, they have an effect. Mm. And what we are doing these days, is, you see that that is uh, what we are trying to do to increase coherence these days is uh, joining, doing the, the, the group program, group meditation uh, online. Mm. So that we have some some groups, you know, in Kenya, some people in Kenya joining that because it mean, it has been found that even if they are not in one place, if they do it at the same time, mm. there is a still a great uh, great uh, bit of that coherence created. Okay. So we have we have those times also uh, being uh, especially in this time of. Uh, Ukraine war, we, there's a mobilization for people to join those groups online. Are they, they are different time zones. So are they on what is on Facebook or are they on uh, WhatsApp? How how can one join? Yeah, we have we have Zoom Zoom connections for those people who have learned here. Okay, so we are going to you are going to share that with us. We can include it in the description. Uh, well, it, it's area. it's for only those who have. Uh, Learned TM, so with you know. So they have to do some registration in order to get it, or how? How can I get a? How can one get a link if if he's a meditator and he would want to participate? Yes, we have a, a WhatsApp group for meditators in Kenya. We can uh, we can we can put them on that uh, on that WhatsApp group. And but one will have to be one one will have to prove that he's one, or will just everybody can join. Those who have learned TM, we uh, we have a database for them, yeah, so we yeah, know yeah, there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, you talked about uh, okay. First of all, what would I expect as a person who wants to learn the technique and not online, or even if online? The moment either come to your place or or ring you, what is the procedure? Well, if you, if you call us, we will direct you to the registration page for intro, mm. and then once you join the once you register, then uh, it gives you the Zoom link for the meeting, mm -hmm. and then you 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 know the appointed time, then you you join the meeting, and then the teacher will be talking to you about. Uh, the benefits of TM and so on, and then they will guide you through uh, how you can learn the technique mm -hmm. over those. Uh, you know, it takes about uh, now, including the introduction, it can take five to six days of about an hour to one and a half hour each day. After that, basically, you are qualified to do it, but we also have follow up uh, mm -hmm. sessions for life. Yeah. Okay. And then there's this other higher or stronger technique. You call it CDs technique. How about that? Can I go and do, 
That one directly or the other requirements? <laughs> you have to have done this uh, TM for, you know, uh, maybe about six months because it is based on your the mind settling down mm. that you can add another gear. Oh, I see. Yeah. Is this what you call the, the flying technique? It's, it includes yogic flying. Mm. Yogic flying, mm. uh, which, which, which is a time when the body lifts off. Uh, and then that, the important thing is the coherence that is created when the body takes off. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's called yogic flying because you don't stay in the air for long. You just. That's, that's the idea people have. They think you can levitate and remain in the air. Like hopping, <laughs> but uh, it's not the hopping that's important. It's uh, the coherence that is created at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, we were chatting the other day, and you told me, in fact, you you actually we are when we are speaking now. You are in Zambia. What are you doing in Zambia? In Zambia, I have uh, some projects here where some communities. Uh, where they they are learning TM. Um, they uh, there's uh, some people who learned TM and then they felt that it would be good for the community and they keep telling their friends. Mm. So every once in a while they, they you know they tell us that uh, they have a uh, hundred or two hundred people. Mm. Like when I came at. Uh, Two weeks ago, uh, mm. more than two two weeks ago, I, I had about 100 people learning in one one place in southern Zambia, and another hundred in a different town. Mm. So we keep uh, we keep doing that in different parts of the world. We, when you learn TM, actually, if you come to the TM center, you you pay for it. Mm. You pay for the course. Yes. But uh, the when we have people who are doing it in groups because they are contributing so much to the coherence of the society mm. then we have uh, people who are uh, you know wealthy and uh, they they know the value of the technique and they contribute towards uh, our teaching these people so mm. we do that in uh, we, are, we are doing that in zambia mm. and two months ago I was in uh, eastern uh, drc mm -hmm. Also teaching Maasai in Tanzania, many mm. many of them learning TM in Tanzania. Mm. Um, in Kenya also, uh, we have groups in Nandi Hills, in in um, Korea, mm. uh, in uh, and we have you know also people or schools in. Um, uh, we have one in Kibera. We have one in Kangware. We have uh, in Nakuru some orphanage. We are teaching South Sudanese refugees oh. uh, in, in Nakuru as well. Mm. And uh, you know, all these kinds of uh, projects, you know, they they learn TM for free, oh. but then they just because they contribute so much to the coherence of the different countries. So, so like now, when you go to Zambia, Congo, in these places in Kenya, where you say you give it for free. Who meets the cost of traveling? Yeah, we, and uh, we have, we have, uh, we have some uh, well wishers mm. uh, in the international partners. We can say who, okay. who fund this project. All right. Oh, that's quite quite impressive because uh, maybe maybe I should say at this particular moment maybe the view, viewers don't know, but. I am a meditator for many years. I did TM meditation, and we even I even went through the TM cities uh, with you know with assistance of some teachers, including Solomon. And uh, it's quite an experience, and it's something somebody would I would really recommend. Um, as Solomon says, all those worries, all those anxieties, and so on, your mind becomes clear. They get out of the way. But I was saving that up to the last moment because I needed to ask the question on behalf of those who may not know much about meditation 
any type of medication and particularly TMCDs. Now, um, what is the future in Kenya, for example, and are we having um, TTCs coming? Because I know the, in the TTC training uh, course, because I know there'll be many people, many of those meditators out there who might be, whose wishes may be rekindled when they see this program, who may want to do the course and what does it take, the cost and so on. Yeah, okay, the, yeah, the, we have teacher training courses every year. As I mentioned earlier, this is the, uh, mostly in uh, Thailand and uh, Holland. Um, and um, so to become a teacher, one of course has to learn TM and uh, experience the benefits and also have the desire to come, become a teacher. Like, like I got that desire mm. and then it happens, it will happen. Now to learn TM. The universe conspires. The universe conspires. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, to so every year we have those teacher training courses. Uh, to learn TM, um, yeah, when you come to learn, uh, when you come to the talk, intro talk, we tell you about uh, the, the the requirements for learning, including uh, there's a course fee, because mm. it's good to pay for something which is so useful. Yes. It also, and, um, but we usually don't stop people learning because they don't have money. We yeah. try to see how we can organize partial scholarships because the course fee we charge is 20,000 shillings, uh, Kenya shillings per, for, for, for the full course. This Which course is this? Uh, TM course. Yeah. Includes um, a lifetime of support anywhere, mm -hmm. anywhere you go there's a TM teacher and you can get a checking for free. Okay. But, uh, you know, especially these days, COVID has brought up a lot of problems. So yeah. whenever one is not able to pay, we always uh, try to organize whatever scholarship, maybe they pay half or uh, if it is a really bad situation, then we organize even more. All right. So, so we are... Uh, you should not feel like uh, you cannot learn TM because of money. Okay, okay. So um, it's been a pleasure speaking to you this way. And when you come back from Zambia, when uh, maybe we should also have another meeting at the center <laughs> to talk other things about, about ourselves in the future. Now it can be spread to other places. Okay, uh, I'll be back in a week. Oh, that's okay. So um, yeah. I would like to invite you this moment to maybe give us your last word uh, so that we can then wind up the, 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 the podcast. Well, uh, the, my last words would be like, uh, TM uh, does not conflict with anything. Anyone who can think can meditate, uh, t can, can do TM because it's very, very easy. But the effects are very, very great because it helps to integrate the mind and the body. Mm. And, uh, you know, we are also part of the, the society. Yes. And benefits come in the field of the mind. We begin to use more of our mental potential. We are psychologists tell us we only use about 5 to 10% mm -hmm. of our mental potential. And that is like someone who is driving a car which, with a windscreen visibility is very low and mm -hmm. but you make a lot of mistakes so once you learn tm you find life just becomes so easy mm -hmm. uh, naturally uh most we get uh, depressed stress is dissolved mm -hmm. and we are told by doctors about 80 percent of all illnesses are caused by or complicated by stress mm -hmm. so you get rid of the very cause of psychosomatic illnesses and health improves our behavior becomes more harmonious so in relationships, we become more loving mm. and uh, we enjoy uh, that more. And also we contribute, we gain peace of mind, which is a basis of uh, world peace. Mm. Um, and through the coherence uh, created in our own brains, we radiate that in our society. Mm. 
So I know some people who actually who have learned TM. They say, I, me, I feel okay, but I'm, I'm just doing it for the society. <laughs> and, it's, uh, and as I said, it's a very simple technique. Basically, yeah. do it yourself. Yes. And uh, so it's, it's, it's good for everyone. Going back to that percentage, percentage thing, it means in a group of 10, if one person starts doing meditation, the change, the, 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 the positive change will be visible in the whole group. That's what you're saying. <laughs> that should be the case. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, that okay. should be the case. If it happens in all systems. Mm. Yeah. So you, uh, before you go again, you had mentioned that you have some program in schools. You, you, you are teaching some schools. Can you comment about the effects in the academics in those schools? Yeah, the, the students start doing better. The first thing that the teachers tell us uh, is that uh, and now, uh, these days I don't have to repeat myself many times. Mm. This is because the, the, the students catch it. They, they get uh, what the teacher is, is teaching much faster and they are able to retain, retain it even more. All right. And uh, so um, maybe uh, when we talk, if we had time, we could have seen the research there, but uh, this is the situation. And also discipline improves. Mm. Uh, we have uh, situations where the, the worst kids in the school who are doing badly in discipline, and they are the ones, there are some schools where they start with that, those kids. They become the best, the best students. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. So it, uh, it's very interesting. <clears throat> um, okay. And we are happy to, if anyone has the school, uh, they want us to introduce it. We are very happy to do so. All right. Okay. So thank you very much, uh, Solomon. It's been a pleasure again speaking to you. And anybody who may be interested to learn about TM, we are going to put the details uh, at the bottom, maybe the Facebook page or their contacts, telephone contact, how you can get in touch with the International, international Meditation Med Society. Meditation Society. Yeah, of Kenya. And then uh, Solomon or anybody will get in touch with you. So thank you very much, Solomon, or Solo, as we used to call you once in a while. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll be meeting again soon, maybe invite you again here or meet wherever we'll be meeting. Yeah, thanks, Patrick. It's, a, it's, a ple it's always a pleasure. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.